Hey, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of the DevEd Podcast. I'm James, your host, and today on our panel, we have Sam Julien. Hey, everyone. Like, you don't Julien your fries. You don't Julien your fries. You Julien your fries. Exactly. That's how it should be. <laughs> Jesse Sanders. Hey, everybody. Brooke Avery. Hey. Mike Dane. Hey, everyone. As a uh, guest panelist replacing Luis today, we have Dan, is it Levy? Levy. And Levy. I could never replace Luis, but I'm, I'm going to do my best to uh, you know, stand in job. Of the three possible ways to pronounce your last name, I would have chosen the other two, okay. Levy or Levi, before I would have picked Levy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too picky on it. It's, uh, it's, I appreciate the effort. <laughs> And then we have a do we do have a special guest on our podcast today, Chuck Wood. Hey folks, uh, Charles Max Wood from DevChat.tv. Joe's been on a number of our shows uh, regularly, and uh, I do see a bunch of other familiar faces. So yeah, great to be here. So today we're going to be talking about podcasting and its role in learning development using podcasts as a way to to learn uh, as a developer. So. There's a lot of topics there. Chuck and I, we've done a lot of podcasting together. So I'm really excited to be talking about this. Plus, we are a podcast talking about learning development. And to have one of our podcast episodes about learning development be about using podcast learning development seems so meta, right? I wonder if we say the wrong things, if this will be like Inception or something or crossing the streams and we'll have some sort of a polarity reversal and end life as we know it. Yeah, maybe. Well, I think one of the first questions that comes right up, if you are a developer or trying to learn development, and somebody says, oh, hey, there's some podcasts you should check out, would be uh, really essentially kind of comes down to why. What's the value of of podcasts? Isn't there much better ways to learn just development? Development is such a visual thing. Why would you want to use podcasts as a way to learn development? I I think, Chuck, if you want to kick in first with an answer, and maybe some other people can chime in after you. Yeah, absolutely. So there are several layers, I guess, to knowledge that you gain in the arena of uh, software development. So, for example, understanding which APIs to use at what time and knowing what all of the capabilities are of your library and things like that. Some of those you will pick up by watching a video or reading a book or following along in a tutorial or something like that. But a lot of the conceptual ideas as far as, hey, what is this capable of? Or when should I use this? Or what are people thinking about when they go to this particular solution? Or how do people think about this particular problem? Those are all things that you glean more through conversation with other people or mentorship of some kind than you do through watching a video or some other visual medium. And so the the podcasts are essentially, at least in my mind, a sort of water cooler where you can go and you can be part of a conversation, even if you can't chip in yourself, you know, you're listening to something that's pre-recorded. You you get to be part of that conversation and follow the thought processes there so that you can understand the principles behind what you're doing. I I think that's the big one. There are other things that people get out of it, but that's probably the most important one. You also get things like community and, you know, understanding other people and things like that out of it. But the, the primary thing, as far as anyone's skills go, basically boils down to, you know, understanding how to think about problems and then how to formulate a solution. And then you can go to the specific API documentation or things like that, that you really can't do well with on an audio medium and figure out exactly how it goes together once, you know, you know, which pieces you want. So I think for me, like the reason that podcasts are super beneficial is because it you know, when you watch a video, it's just very much like a presentation on that topic. Or if you're reading a book, it's kind of the same thing. But when you watch, or not watch, but when you listen to a podcast, it's real people who are sharing personal experiences and it opens your eyes and your understanding to things, um, like perspectives that you wouldn't be looking at otherwise, that you don't get in the book. Because a book or a video doesn't really share that author's personal opinions or thoughts or even their experiences. But when you are listening to them and they're sharing kind of like what you were saying, Chuck, like in that community feeling, you're, you're getting that perspective from their experiences. And I think it just helps open up your understanding to things that you perhaps wouldn't have seen or understood otherwise. 
So for me, that is why I, you know, like I listen to Chuck's podcasts all the time. I love them. And it's for that reason, because, you know, here I am listening to, to Joe and like Ward Bell as they discuss things. And one of them likes to play devil's advocate. And so it's just really fun to get that other perspective and see things from other people's eyes. Yeah. To your point too, um, for a long time, we did shows like Ruby Rogues and JavaScript Jabber where we were just, you know, we would have a discussion about a topic. And I realized that we had these terrific guests on and that nobody really knew who they were even after we were done, other than that they knew a lot about a particular topic. And so I started shows, uh, my JavaScript story, my Ruby story, and my Angular story because I wanted to get those stories. I wanted to give people the chance to say, oh, this is a person who's done something interesting and look, they have all of these things in common with me. This story is something I can identify with. Oh, they solved this hard problem and there's a story behind that. And so yeah. you're, you're right on right there too. And people identify with stories really, really well. True. There's a, actually an, an episode of Ruby Rogues where Amy Knight talks about uh, being a beginner and learning to learn and things like that. And I mean, first of all, everybody loves Amy Knight, but that episode I've sent to a bunch of people because she talks about the moment where you're a beginner programmer and you realize that you're not just trying to memorize a bunch of facts, you're trying to learn a method of problem solving. And I think that's one of the really valuable things about podcasts is being able to hear from somebody who you probably admire because they're on a podcast, but you're hearing like a very like human empathetic story that then like gives people a lot of encouragement. So I sent that episode to a lot of people and had a lot of beginner programmers say that that was like a light bulb moment for them to hear Amy talk like that, you know? That's cool. Yeah, I think the the thing for me, like books and videos are great, and but they're a very uh, constricted flow. Like this is what we're going to cover. This is what we're going to talk about. And where podcasts really bleed across that is it, it's a discussion. And, and we do have devil's advocates and we're asking, well, why would I want to do this? Help me understand. And, and we're digging in, I think, into the conversational part of programming, which we actually, uh, in, in my mind, I get to kind of hear what is the developer, you know, what is the, the speaker? What are they thinking? What are, how are they putting this stuff together? What's the logic behind it? And it's, I think those things are really hard to convey into a video or into a book and have it it really flow enough where you could read it and understand it. Whereas a podcast is just that a uh, little more wide open uh, medium that allows us to uh, be able to uh, explore that. Yeah. Just going off what, what you're saying, Jesse, I think we've talked a lot on this podcast about different mediums, you know, what's the benefit of books? What's the benefit of videos or articles? And I do think that podcasts, because they're so conversational have a particular spot in there. And I think it's something that you can't get anywhere else. So for me, I see a podcast as just listening in on a conversation. And especially if you're like a solo developer, you don't have, you know, necessarily like teammates that are involved in kind of conversing with you about those things. It can be a really good way to just engage with other developers in more of a one-sided way, but you're involved in that conversation. Um, and you can sit in on any number of conversations. So if I want to hear a conversation about JavaScript, I can do that. If I want to hear a conversation about data structures, I can do that. Etc. And podcasts are so off the cuff that I think you get more out of it than than you would if it was like planned out. Yeah, I mean, I will chime in here and say that yeah, um, the shows that we do are very off the cuff, right? It's it's you know it's a conversation. A lot of them are very scripted, and you know are more of the presentation style. And that's the other great thing about it is that if you really want that polished presentation, you can find it. And if you want the conversation, you can find it there. And the other great thing about podcasts is that, and, and I hear this all the time when I talk to people, I'm like, oh, they're like, yeah, I listen to you on my commute or I listen to you when I'm mowing the lawn or I listen to you when I'm bathing my kids or, you know, whatever. And it turns out, you know, my hands are busy, my eyes are busy, but I can listen, right? And so they can pick it up wherever they're at and they can just, they can learn something. I was going to definitely chime in with that. I think one of the things that I like about podcasts in general and is the fact that there are some times when the only thing that isn't busy is your ears and your brain. And so podcasts can fit that, that bill really well. I think they also too, I mean, they're so easy to find. I mean, a podcast, like I can go from listening to music on my phone to now I'm listening to a podcast, then back to music or whatever. Like it's, 
podcasts are so widely distributed and they're on so many platforms that it's, it's not like you have to go, you know, buy a book or subscribe to a website. Like they're just are already on all the platforms that you already use. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and they're, they're becoming more and more ubiquitous too. I mean, it's funny you mentioned that, you know, it's kind of everywhere. You can listen to them on your Amazon echo. You can listen to them on your phone. Spotify is a place now where you can listen to podcasts. There are apps in your car radio. If you have one of those nifty smart radios, you know, you can get them on Stitcher and things like that. I mean, it's all over the place. And, and a lot of people post them also to YouTube with some, some uh, image on it. So yeah, I mean, wherever you want to find them, they're there. You can listen to them in a box and you can listen to them with a fox. <laughs> hey, that's my line. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got some questions for you, Chuck, specifically, having by far the most amount of podcasting experience here specifically related to development. I, we didn't really start off with this, but maybe it's, it is a good idea. You, you did mention you were from DevChat TV, but just to really kind of give us a background of what DevChat TV is, maybe a little history of what you get, why you got started, then I have a couple questions for you that are, I think will be going to be relevant to our audience. Yeah, absolutely. So I got started podcasting in 2000. 7 2008 I think it was 2008 and um I had a friend that bought an iPod back when they had actual spinning medium in them it wasn't flash memory it was the old ones with like the wheel control on them and uh anyway he got me into podcasting I won't tell the whole story cuz you know we're constrained on time a little bit but I started listening to podcasts and I found a podcast about Ruby on Rails called Rails Envy and it's not out there anymore I think Jason Cipher has passed away but Greg Pollock was the other person on there. And if you're familiar with Code School or U Mastery, I think is the other, the other one that he's working on. He sold uh, Code School to Pluralsight. Anyway, so uh, he, you know, they were just talking about Rails on their podcast and I reached out and asked him what it would take for me to start a show. And I thought podcasters were some kind of web celebrity or something. So I didn't really expect an answer back. And I got an email back the next day encouraging me to start my own show. So... And then I encourage other people to start their own show. Our, our mission at, at devchat.tv is actually to make sure that every programming community has a podcast and every programmer knows that there's a quality podcast out there for them. That, that's very in line with the way that I look at things. But yeah, so we started a show. I interviewed Greg for the first episode. I interviewed James Gray from the Ruby community on the third episode of that show. It was called Rails Coach. And then we just, you know, on the weeks that I didn't have a guest, I just talked about what I was working on in Rails. And after a while, a friend of mine turned over his screencast series to me that was called Teach Me to Code at teachmetocode.com and did both of those for a while. And then in, I think it was April or May of 2011, um, James posted on Twitter that, oh, it'd be nice if there was a panel discussion show for Ruby. And I'd been thinking the same thing. I'd followed the twit.tv uh, studio shows for a long time. And so, you know, we just pulled one together. And uh, then Jameson Dance came and wanted to start a show like it on JavaScript. And so we pulled that together with JavaScript Jabber. And I started another show, freelancer show at the same time. And funny enough, I decided I wanted to learn how to build iOS apps. So I started iFreaks. And uh, I was on that show for like four years. And I never did learn how to write Swift or Objective-C. But yeah, you know, so you can kind of follow the journey there. Joe and Merrick and I think Aaron was involved a little they asked me like four or five times to start uh, an Angular show and I finally capitulated and we did Adventures in Angular. And yeah, now I've been talking to people and people are asking for a bunch of other show topics. So last year we started Elixir Mix, React Roundup and Views on View. And then this year um, we're on track. To, we just started Sustain Our Software, which uh, shortens to SOS. Um, and that's about open source sustainability. I just barely finalized the details on data therapy, which is a data science podcast that we're going to be putting together. And I'm talking to people about shows on DevOps, AI, blockchain, and I'm probably forgetting one or two. But but yeah, I'm I'm currently talking to people because again, you know, we're, our mission is to make sure that every programming community has a show. So, oh, Python, uh, working on a Python show. So anyway, that that should give you some idea. But yeah, initially when we started Ruby Rogues, it got big fast. And the reason was, was that we had people that people wanted to hear from, but also we were having conversations with the people who were making the things that people were using and asking them the questions, different uh, programming frameworks. We talked to people about different virtual machines. We talked to people about just different coding styles, 
our most popular episode on uh, Ruby Rogues is actually the how to learn episode. And it's like episode 131 and we're on episode like 400 and something now. So, you know, just to give you an idea, I mean, we've, we've talked about all kinds of things, but we're talking about the things that people want to hear about and having the conversations that they would have if they were around. So that's ultimately what it boiled down to for us. Okay, so I have a question. You have all of these different podcasts. And I know a lot of that is just simply, you know, conversations between you and these experts. But what do you do or what do you feel like makes your podcasts like truly educational? Is there, is, I mean, you listen to all sorts of podcasts on any topic and there's lots of different formats or, you know, little, like they'll have little segments as part of their show. But what is it that you do that you feel like makes it truly like a learning opportunity beyond just having a conversation, but something that's truly educationally valuable? Yeah, I think there are two things there. One is, is that we're talking about things that people want to know about. But I think the real kicker for, for these shows and for a lot of other shows that are highly successful, I think one of the big ones that's grown a lot lately, for example, is the Joe Rogan show. And, and he, he has the same ethos. I mean, we do not have the same feel to our shows. I'll, I'll, I'll say that right now. But people are looking for stuff that's real. I mean, you look at our political discourse, you look at social media, and, and people are putting up the best parts of, of what they are instead of the whole package. You know, the politicians put out the things that they, they think are going to get them votes. You know, I'm, I'm also of the opinion, for example, and I don't want to delve too deep into politics, but I think that was what drove a lot of people to vote for Donald Trump, you know, like him or hate him. He just says what comes through his head, you know, and, you, you know, you, you may hate him for not having a filter. Or you may love him for not having a filter, but that's what people are looking for. They're looking for something real that they can identify with. And that's what we provide at devchat.tv. And, you know, it, it has to have some value, obviously. But when it comes right down to it, that's what it is. I, I talk to people, too, about finding a job, for example, and they focus on their technical skills. But I look at them and I say, look, yeah, you have to have a baseline skill level, but you have to be able to pick up the way that people do things and you have to be able to work with other people. And that's what the employers are looking for. And so it's, it's the same thing here, right? It's, it's who are you really? What are we actually getting here? Yeah, the technology is there and that's what we're talking about. But when it comes right down to it, it's, it's all of the other things, right? I think another good example of this is in, on the Adventures in Angular show, Aaron Frost you know, recently took that over for me and he does his little air horn thing and then he just cracks up. And I think one thing just going off of what he was saying is that one skill that I think is really hard to learn, especially just over the internet or if you're learning from a school or a boot camp, is learning how to interact with other professional developers. And that's something that I think a lot of people have a hard time doing when they get their first job. So if you're listening to all these different podcasts, you're listening how developers are communicating with each other. I think that's a skill that is very useful and that you can really only get from a medium like a podcast or from real world experience. Yeah, I agree. Sorry about that. I cut out for a second. But the, the point I was making was that Aaron does it because he thinks it's hilarious. And it's just him, right? And so that, that's what people are looking for. They're looking for somebody that they can identify with, that they enjoy essentially spending time with. And so I think that's the real key, Brooke, to your point is, yeah, we give people people that they want to spend time with. And, and that's, what, uh, that's what your point is too, Mike, is that, you know, it's, it's how do I interact with these people and do I enjoy interacting with these people? Right. And it, it gives you a really good sense of the, how the community is. Like when I was first trying to, or I was sort of in the beginnings of being a professional developer, those were air quotes for people listening by audio. It was Ruby Rogues and Adventures in Angular, like listening on my commute all the time. I couldn't, I, I didn't have like, the money to go to conferences or anything like that. I wasn't even doing Ruby professionally. It's just that I really liked listening to Avdi and Amy and people like that. And it gave me a sense that like both the Ruby and the Angular communities were really welcoming just based on the conversations that people were having. Like you could tell that it wasn't a bunch of egos, <laughs> you know, that people weren't trying to like one up them, one up each other. It was like a very friendly conversation and I think that goes a long way for people people newer in the community. It also causes you to open yourself up to the information that we're putting out there then because you know that it's real. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, um, 
So we talked a little bit about uh, the value of podcasts, using podcasts. I think it's interesting, it'd be interesting to go through and maybe go through the, the panel and talk to uh, or poll everybody and ask the panel what podcasts, development-related podcasts, I'm sure there's lots of other really great podcasts you might be listening to, but let's focus on development. What uh, development-related podcasts or something, even if it's tangentially related to development, do uh, each of you uh, listen to? I'll jump in first. Um, probably the big three for me would be um, Adventures in Angular, Angular Air, and NG Houston. So those are all very Angular specific, and um, those are those are the ones that I, I would hit up the most often to to uh, sit down and either watch or listen. Right. Uh, awesome. I can jump in. Uh, I I listen to Sprint UX. I'm a couple episodes behind, but it's uh, it's one of my favorites. It's a smaller one, but it, it just solid content every week. So I don't I don't listen to many technical podcasts anymore just because I feel like I'm bombarded with information all the time. But I am still really drawn to the ones that are interviews with people. So the ones that Chuck does, like uh, my Angular story or my JavaScript story, those ones I really like because I, I like being able to hear the backgrounds of where where people came from and how they got to. And along similar note, there's another podcast called Second Career Devs that my friend Kyle Shevlin runs. He's a fellow Portlander. And uh, that's a great show because he goes and interviews people from usually from the React world, but not necessarily from React, um, like I was on there. And these are all people who obviously programming is their second major career. And so I really like that. I don't listen much these days, but I do also really love the Base CS podcast that Vida Hijoshi, also a Portlander, <laughs> and uh, Saran do. It's part of Code Newbies. They basically break down computer science concepts in really easy to understand ways. So I'm a really, really big fan of of what they're doing. So you know, I I really like really any of the ones that Chuck is doing, um, especially the. JavaScript Jabber. I think that one's pretty fun. I'll second you though, Sam, when you said the interview style ones, I get a lot of value out of that because kind of like what you were saying with Amy, where she was sharing her personal story and, you know, some of her struggles and things like I find a lot of value in that. And it just, it kind of gives me some motivation to just keep going and, you know, not, um, not to give up maybe when things get hard or when I could come up with some excuse of, wow, I have a thousand other things to do, but so yeah, I, I like those kind of interview ones. They they definitely inspire me. But one that we've not talked about is it's called Syntax, and it's with Scott Tolinsky, who does the level up tutorials. They're just really fun, and and they do a great job not just on one topic particular in particular, but they do a great job kind of talking about what is it what does it mean to be a developer and what's that lifestyle like. And they touch on really important things, uh, you know, just like in general from like workday issues or, you know, everything that you could kind of think of. So if you're interested in getting in it or if you're already in development, I think they're just really good conversations to have and, and understand that we all go through these things. So yeah, syntax. That's funny. I was actually going to say the same one, syntax, because we had Scott on the show last week and I started listening to that uh, since last week. So that's definitely a recommended one for me as well. Uh, I've also been listening to another one called uh, Learning Machines 101. It's like this uh, AI podcast. And I found that to be kind of a cool way to learn more about AI because I didn't know a lot about it. And so it's been cool introduction, like just listening to the podcast and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I just want to pile on. Um, so I, I listen to a lot of the ones that we produce mainly because I'm spot checking the production and things like that, uh, since that's mostly my job. But Second Career Devs has been terrific. Of the shows that, I, you know, that I'm not, not directly involved with, I also try and stay on top of some of the news on some of the ecosystems that are out there, and the official view news is pretty awesome. And that's also done by Greg Pollock and team. And then, yeah, Syntax is terrific. And I'm trying to remember the other one with the guy from CSS Tricks, because that one's also pretty awesome. Shop Talk, Shop Talk Radio. Anyway, you guys have mentioned all the ones that I've listened to, so that's me. What about uh, where you listen to? Has anybody listened to a podcast in doing anything unusual, not just like driving around in your car? How dorky do we want to get here? Oh, we're, we're fine getting dorky. Let's just keep it PG-rated. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so 
for me, listening to podcasts is kind of relaxing. It's one of those things where I have a really hard time just settling down and watching TV or watching a movie because I feel like there's so much to do that my brain is always moving. It's always thinking about what do I need to do for Thinkster, um, you know, from marketing to everything that we have to do. So like I said, like podcasts have kind of turned into my TV time in a way, but I joke you not, like I will get out a set of Legos and sit there and build Legos while I'm listening to the podcast. Because awesome. it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where like, I, I like to be building things and just thinking, you know, logically and, and kind of like organizing things. So there you have it. There is, there is the ultimate dorkdom of Brooke. That's amazing. And I'm going to steal that idea. And it gives me an excuse to buy Legos as an adult. <laughs> it's now a business expense. There you go. Now expensing it. Sorry, out zero. <laughs> I, I was going to say, you know, buying Legos and listening to podcasts, I think that means that she and Joe were meant to work together because... <laughs> Well, don't even mention the fact that we're both huge Star Wars fans. That yeah. that was actually our first. What week. kind of Legos are you putting together, Brooke? <laughs> Star Wars, indeed. The last one was the Tantive Four. I have not even opened the Cloud City set yet. That is put on hold for <laughs> a later date. So there you go. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you mentioned the Star Wars too. Um, so I'm starting podcasts with my kids next week. Okay. And my seven-year-old wants to do a Star Wars podcast. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, there's so much material there. It's, yeah, it's just amazing. That'll be way cool. I usually listen when I'm working in the yard or traveling or things like that. So, you know, I'll be on the airplane with my headphones in and just relaxing. Or, yeah, I've been doing a lot of work in the yard lately because my HOA, whom I hate, has been on my back to get a couple of things done in my yard. So, mm. All right, so uh, I want to start moving towards wrapping up here, but uh, we have at least one at least one more question I want to spend some time discussing, which is, as from a listener standpoint, how can you as a listener get the most educational value out of your podcasts you listen to? Ooh, good question. I think uh, Charles was kind of breaking it up like there's a uh, some that are scripted and structured, and then there's some that are you know free form, you know peeking into the insights of the, the discussions of how a dev brain works. Uh, and I think if you can identify what kind of podcast you're, you're actually listening to, like what kind of thing you can hope to get out of it, that might help like actually, you know, give that some, uh, uh, you know, give you something that you know you can leave with. But, I think for me, the biggest thing is paying attention to them <laughs> and not, <laughs> uh, not trying to have them on in the background. I, I, I have to, that's why, that's why doing things with your hands really helps and not trying to do other things. But that also often gives podcasts the advantage over video because you're more likely to be engaged with them. Yeah, I can't code while I'm listening to a podcast. I have to be doing non-computer. Like right, that. exactly. Yeah. yeah. One other thing that I tell people, because a lot of times folks will they'll be like, oh, well, there was this thing that you talked about on the show and I can't remember what it is. And uh, there's this little trick that I have, and I'll see if I can uh, illustrate it in audio. Which Elio? No, oh, so yeah, it, it just heard me. But yeah, I, what I do is I use Siri and I just say, you know, or, you know, if you're on uh, an Android phone, Google. And so, you know, you just hold the button in or whatever you do to trigger it. And then essentially I say, remind me to check out whatever it was that I heard about on the show, because it'll pause the show while it does it. Remind me to check this out at five o'clock tonight or whenever. And that way, then I, I'm in a position to write it down. Because a lot of times when I'm driving or things like that, I just can't. And, uh, you know, I don't want to lose it. I don't want to forget it. And, and so then I can bring it up later. And then the other thing that I like to do with the podcast that I listen to is if I hear about something, I will ask other people about it. Because usually I can find somebody near me that I can have a, a real-time conversation with about it that knows something more about it than I do. And you can't always do that with the podcast hosts that you're listening to. That's exactly what I was going to say was like furthering that conversation, taking what you heard and what you found interesting and then going and talking to other people. And it, it goes back to something that Joe and I talk about all the time at Thinkster is learning, not just by doing, but learning by teaching other people. And so you can take what you've heard and listen to and go and share that with someone else 
And then like what you're saying, Chuck, is, you know, let them also teach you in return and kind of carry on that conversation. But now it's your opportunity to really ask deeper questions and really go into, you know, how does it apply to you and your life and your job? So yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I was going to say um, a lot of podcasts have call outs or they make references to different things like external things. I mean, we do that all the time on this show. So just making note of those things, kind of like what Chuck was saying, and then going back and researching them. So if someone says, oh, this article is really good, or oh, this one podcast was really good, like go listen to that podcast or read that article. And then you kind of get the full context of the conversation if you kind of follow up. So that's what I, I always try to do that is like write down, oh, I want to go read such and such article or whatever. Yeah, I, I have a lot of people ask me actually, so how do you stay current, right? How, how, do I, how do I keep up? And usually my first question is why? You know, why do you want to stay current? And most of the time it's so that they can remain competitive in the job market or something like that. But ultimately, if I dig in, there is a little bit of I want to know the, the cool new stuff. But then the next, the next thing is, is, okay, so what are you doing then to stay current? And a lot of people don't know. They, they don't know exactly what to do. And sometimes I get the answer, well, I listen to your podcasts and they don't realize that the podcast is just the first step, right? We can bring things to a certain level of awareness. It's the same thing with conference talks, right? We can bring things to a certain level of awareness, but we only have an hour, right? And uh, in order for you to understand it, you're going to need more than an hour. And so, yeah, you have to take those steps. And if you're not going to take those steps, then you're not going to be current on whatever it is. And so, yeah, just, you know, just spend the time. I mean, book another hour and then go explore it. Or go to the users group and, and meet up with people and ask them about it or go on Slack and ask people about it. But yeah, all of these things. It's funny, people talk about having their big ideas in the shower. I have my big ideas when I'm talking to people about something and then it occurs to me, oh, there's this other connection and my brain connects them through conversation and that's just the way I work. So I have to do it that way. You know, another thing too is that I think it gets really easy sometimes. You find your favorite podcast and you end up just listening to it in order. But I think as obvious as it sounds, I think it's easy to forget sometimes that it's important to go and seek out topics that you are interested in or that you need, like that you're, uh, maybe you have a, a weak spot that you feel like in, in your programming, you know, that's kind of a weak area of mine, but I would go and seek out episodes specifically on those topics so that your learning isn't just whatever happens to be on the next episode, but something that's actually relevant to what you're needing to use at the time. Yeah. One more thing I will add to this is go find things that are outside of your wheelhouse. And there are two areas that I suggest people do. One is, is the other camp, right? So if you're an Angular developer, go listen to a Vue podcast or a React podcast and see what they're talking about. Because I guarantee you that in some cases, they're going to be talking about the same problem we're talking about in Angular. In some cases, they're going to have some novel idea about how to solve things that they've already figured out that you can then bring into you know, your conversations. I also tend to do this with politics. So I, I lean very far one way with politics. And I've gone and listened to shows from the other side, so to speak. And the reason that that works is because then it's, okay, what are their conversations about? What do they care about? And then I can have the conversation with people about it. The other thing that I'm going to throw out there is, oh, I totally lost my train of thought. Sorry about that. Do, do, do. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> We're all like, well, Chuck was saying something really important. I want to hear what the rest of it was. And so nobody wants to say anything now. Yeah. You make a lot of connections just by uh, challenging the way that you think. Oh, the other, the other area that I wanted to push on, this is the other part of it, is where are we heading in the future, right? A lot of people get in and, you know, we, we've talked mostly about web development. But is the internet going to be the thing in another five years, 10 years? Or are we going to be using something else? Are we going to be using AR and VR? Are we going to be looking at technologies around machine learning? Is that going to be where a lot of the action is going to be? And so at this point, I think it's prudent also to look at those things, see what's emerging, and then spend a little bit of time at least becoming somewhat familiar with them. And the reason is, is you, you may find, oh, wait, you know, I really love this more than web development. Or you may also find that just having a baseline understanding, when it comes back around into your career, your boss asks you about it, your your coworkers talk to you about it, you know, or all of a sudden, you know, virtual reality is taking over what used to be websites. You're in a position now where you can actually have the conversations and you've primed yourself so that you can go learn that stuff now. And, and I think it's critically important for people to look at that stuff. Even if it is three, four, five years down the road, we don't know where the breakthroughs are going to be on these things. 
but having a basic understanding of it is really going to help. And that's, that's why I've picked the areas that I have in the areas that we're going to next with devchat.tv. It's not because they're hot now. I mean, that people want to know about them now, but in another three, four, five years, when we have that breakthrough in technology, that's when people are going to need to understand it. And I want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to learn it before they need it. Totally agree on the uh, thing about listening to things that are the opposite of your perspective. I Mm -hmm. try to do the same thing. It's really important, whether technical or otherwise, especially since algorithms are controlling our lives at this point. We have to purposely seek out to have our understandings of things challenged. Awesome. Well, I think it kind of brings us close to the end of our episode for today. Can Uh, I say one more thing? Yeah, please. If you're thinking that you want to start a podcast, I am happy to help you. And your perspective is going to be different from mine. So if you're thinking about it, you think you might want to do it, it will help your career. It will help you get noticed. But more than that, it'll help you clarify a lot of your thinking. And we need your perspective out there. So if if this is the medium that you think you want to put things out in, and if not, you know, do video, do blogs, um, you know, teach courses, whatever. But I think the more people put information out there, the better off the community is. So uh, by all means, if you're looking to start a podcast and you want to just talk about what you're learning, we'll help you figure it out. Yeah, so let's uh, go around the panel and do our standard question of if you had a buddy, a friend who did not know something that you would want them to know about, what would that thing be? Uh, Mike, are you up for starting? I can start. Yeah, I was uh, hanging out with some friends over the weekend and I had the Sam Adams summer logger. Uh, it was pretty great. So I'd recommend checking that out. Definitely a good beer if you're into that. Awesome. Awesome. Sam, how about you? So this is super dorky, but the second edition of the book, I Will Teach You to Be Rich by Ramit Sethi has come out. It's the 10 year anniversary of that book, which is kind of depressing to me um, because I read it when it came out. And it's a personal finance book. It's got a really corny name, but now he's just sort of embraced it. But it's super practical about getting your finances in order. Uh, I'm a really big fan of Ramit Sethi. At first, he can be a little bit off-putting because he kind of looks like he would be bro but I actually love everything he does. So highly recommend you check out the book, I Will Teach You to Be Rich. I'm pretty sure he was just on Tim Ferriss' podcast too. I don't know. If he, that's... Yeah, they're, they're friends from forever ago. Yeah. Awesome. Brooke, how about you? I've got a couple and it's totally related to what you and I are doing, but like our, our lives have been very much revolving around marketing lately. So Joe uh, recommended the book, um, building your story brand or building a story brand by Donald Miller. And that's been really, really helpful. So if anybody is, you know, trying to put together a website, I totally recommend that book or, or just market any kind of, business that you're doing. Um, But also he does have a podcast and not just for business and marketing and being an entrepreneur, but the stuff they talk about on there, I feel like is just good. It's good just for life in general. And so I would really recommend that. And and I think it's the same thing. It's just building a story brand with Donald Miller. The other one though, that we've been using a lot is actually called Asana, which is sort of like a monday.com but it's just an online like program manager. So if you have a team and you're all working together and you know, you you need to coordinate certain projects and things, we've tried out a few different platforms and none of them are perfect, but I would say that so far of all of them, I think Asana has been our favorite. So I would recommend that as well. Awesome. Is Asana like an alternative to Buffer? Is it like a social media marketing? No, it's like a, a project management tool. So, oh, okay. Like, yeah. okay. Yeah, task Basecamp. creation assignment. Yeah. yeah, that sort of type of thing. Jesse, how about you? Yeah, I get more of a kind of general life hack. And, and Joe, you and I have experienced this. When I go to new cities, and it seems like I'm always going to a new place uh, lately, one of the, the things that I just absolutely enjoy is finding a scooter or an electric assist bike and, and going around the city and just exploring. So the other day, Joe and I were in Nashville and, and uh, we want to just kind of explore some stuff. And, and Joe's having some problems getting an app set up to be able to rent a scooter. He's like, oh, forget it. We'll just walk. And I was like, Joe, you don't understand. We need to get the scooter. 
And, and I did not understand at the time. And after after realizing that that somehow it had magically became unlocked, an hour later, Joe's got the the biggest smile on his face, like a like a ten year old kid that is you know uh, just discovered the the uh, secret to the world. We just had an absolute blast. I just did that in San Francisco. Did it when I was in London, you know, riding an electric bike around there. So, so much fun. A great way to get out and see the city and be able to move around quickly and, and uh, without, without the restrictions of, you know, being in a car or, um, you know, just walking around. So, a great way to get out there. Well, that sounds That's super fun. It is. Two oh, super is. All right. Dan, have you gone yet? Nope. But All right, Dan. Uh, Y'all have great, uh, like, fun-sounding things. Like, I, the only thing that I've been discussing all day is this CPU.fail site that describes all these new CPU hacks that have come out the last week or so, and they're terrifying. Basically, uh, all our CPUs are broken, and uh, I'm just going to go cry into my tears bucket. And uh, <laughs> I think that's about the only reaction I can have to that. Did they sell tears buckets on Amazon? Uh, yeah, I think you can get those the switch button, and they'll just like re resend you, re up you every time. They've been not, they've been uh, on sale because of Game of Thrones lately. So <laughs> that's what I keep hearing from my friends that have been watching it. The ending was awful. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I'm gonna invest in Amazon tier bu- tier buckets. Nice, nice. I've got just one thing I would tell a friend, and this is a little premature. This uh, may not be live by the time you hear this, but Chuck and I are going to be starting up yet one more podcast. And this one I am super excited about. We're like just meeting this week with our panelists to start the process of throwing it together and deciding when we're going to record. And we don't even have a name for it yet. But we're going to be doing a podcast on Dungeons and Dragons. Super geeky, but <laughs> nerds. So excited. Yeah, total nerds. I'm super excited for it to go do something that I, I enjoy, you know, uh, both podcasting and Dungeons and Dragons. So putting them together is going to be really fun for me. So that's what uh, I would talk about. Stay tuned. Uh, check out devchat.tv to check out when it becomes live and becomes a thing. Yep. All right, Chuck, you can you wrap you want to wrap us up? Sure. I've got two things that I'm gonna shout out about here. One is I just found this. It's called Sensa. And I'm incapable of saying it the Z sound is a Z sound because I lived in Italy for two years and it's Sensa. But it's uh it's an app for keto, the keto diet. And uh anyway, it has uh, meal planning and recipes and all kinds of stuff in it. It's it's really, really awesome. So I'm loving that. And then the second one. And it was funny because Joe says, this might not be available by the time you get this. That's like, that. that's me like every other week. I'm working on this thing and it might not be ready. This might not be ready by the time. <laughs> anyway, I am working on, let me give you a little bit of background. I'll make it really fast. But as I was writing the book for how to get a development job, one of the things I tell people that they have to do is go join a users group in their local community mainly because you get to meet people and you get to level up quickly on things that are going to help you get that job, right? The problem is, is a lot of people either couldn't make it to their local community or they didn't have one. Now, if you don't think you have one and you haven't gone to meetup.com and looked, then you're doing it wrong. Go look and make sure you don't have one first. But anyway, um, I am organizing an everywhere um, meetup for JavaScript developers and Ruby developers and essentially what I'm going to put together is they're going to be weekly meetings. The nice thing is, is my pool of developers is everybody. So I can get some people that you want to hear from. We're going to do some roundtable chats afterwards. So I'll just rotate people in and out of the Zoom chat that we're using so that, you know, we can talk about your problems and then we can rotate somebody in who has an answer to you and then get their question. And then I'm going to create an online forum for it and a Slack room for it so that you can come in and ask questions during the month. And that way we'll kind of have this, this everywhere um, meetup. And so the JavaScript group is everywhere JS and the Ruby is everywhere RB. And I'm probably going to create a few more depending on how these communities go. Right now, if you go to everywherejs.com, I think that's where it's at. If not, you can go to keepcurrentacademy.com. Um, and that's where I'm hosting all of these together. You can get on the wait list. Um, I'm hoping to get it launched in June, but I don't know exactly when it's going to get together because I want to have kind of a critical mass of people when I start so that we 
that there are people for you to have a conversation with when we launch. And I'm going to charge probably five or ten dollars for it a month. But that's mostly just because if people invest in things, they'll show up. I don't want it to be free and then have nobody show up. And then it also lets me buy nice things for our speakers. So anyway, that that's what I'm working on. And yeah, so everywhere JS and everywhere RB, depending on which community you're in. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Chuck, for coming on and being on our panel and uh, talking about podcasting. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We will catch you in our next episode.